Hey everyone, Steven Robles here, and this is my new home studio. We just built a brand new home in Central Florida, and I had the opportunity to retrofit a small office space. This room is only nine foot by eight foot, so not big, but I got to customize pretty much how I wanted it. And so I've built kind of a mini home studio, gonna go through everything in the room from sound treatment to what's on the desk to the video equipment and mics that's all here. I've set up the room where I can go from working to recording a video in less than 30 seconds, whether it's for YouTube or for work. I have a top down shot ready to go here if I need to do any product photography or videos. Lots of scenes where I can change the colors of the studio. I've set up all the lighting in HomeKit so I can change the background color of a video with just a tap and it changes quickly so I can get different looks. There's orange and here's green. And I also use the room for audio podcasts as well. So let me show you around. So first off, being an audio and video recording studio, sound treatment was really important. During the construction process, we put some sound dampening isolation in the walls and that helps a lot. But this room is actually right off our family living room and I have three kids. So there's a lot of noise that goes on there. And so I had to do some treatment to the door. That was kind of the weak point where a lot of the loose audio was coming from. And so here we didn't get a heavy door, unfortunately. And so what I did was this is actually a sound blanket that's made to put over doors. This is from Audi Mute. And because I couldn't attach it to the door, it was actually too heavy. The door wouldn't be able to hold up this whole thing. I actually attached it to an arm up there on the wall. And I'll put a link to everything I talk about in the video description, but that arm is actually a swivel arm. So now I can close the door and then I can actually just swing this kind of blanket in front of the door and that actually helps a lot. It helps dampen the sound, not only in the room, but also coming from the living room and the rest of the house. I wanted to get these because they're decorative and they actually show behind the videos that I do. And then I got some more plain sound treatment on the other walls. And then I've actually covered an entire wall by these one foot by one foot sound panels. These were cheap, I got them on Amazon, but they're doing the job to actually put them on the wall rather than use command strips right on the foam, right onto the wall. I hot glued all these sound panels to chloroplast, like that white material, almost like cardboard, but not, it's like plasticky. Hot glued the panels to the chloroplast and then used command strips on the chloroplast onto the wall. So if I do ever wanna take them down, I should be able to get them off without damaging the wall too much. And they've stayed on pretty solid. I haven't had any falling off. And so that process seemed to have worked. Plus I do have one cloud sound treatment uh, to help with the ceiling. I could put another one on another part of the ceiling, but I think it's been doing all right, so we'll see. Now in this corner of the room, this is probably the most set-like thing I have here because it does show on camera. So I got these shelves off Amazon. They were pretty inexpensive, easy to put up, and I have some items on there. Bonus points if you can drop in the comments what that's called. I got that at an antique shop in North Carolina. If you know what that is, drop a comment below. And I changed out some of the things on the other shelves. Right now I have a microphone from Earthworks. I have my Eve flare for a little bit of color accent. And actually one of the things I was most excited about to get for this office was one of the Grid Studio. I actually got the iPhone 4 like exploded model here and I really wanted to put it on the shelves, but unfortunately it's just a little too tall. And so I have to figure out another solution or somewhere else to put it. But I was really excited about that. I have a Hue sign floor lamp, and that is a great gradient color lamp, so I can change that. I have a Hue Bloom here on the shelf that's also shining on the back wall. Of course, one of the best parts of the office, the Star Wars rug. Now, like I mentioned, I can be ready to record in about 30 seconds, and it's because everything in this room is HomeKit and automated. One of my favorite pieces of HomeKit gear in this office is the Eve motion blinds on this window. But I know I needed to get a blackout model of this motion blind, so when I needed to record, no sun got through. And so when I'm coming here in the morning, I have an automation called office work and I'll let this play so you can see all the lights change. The ceiling fan light turned on and the actual fan turned on. All the lights in the studio that I used to record turned off and now you're actually hearing the Eve motion blind opening and that's how it will start in the morning when I say I'm ready for office work. I know it's a little blown out right now but when I'm ready to record a video, I can say to my home assistant from Apple, let's make a video. It asks me what color to choose and when I say a color, then everything will change in the office. The ceiling fan turns off because you would hear that in the background. All the intelligent lighting turns on and the motion blinds close. Speaking of lighting, the main light right here is a Aperture Amaran 200X with the Light Dome 2. Provides some nice soft light both on the desk, which I'll get to in a moment, and my face when I'm recording. 
And then for hair light and fill light, I actually have some Elgato Key Light Airs. I was using those lights in my previous setup, and rather than try to get more lights, I just repurposed those. And what's great is Elgato actually sells wall mounts for those lights. One is mounted on the wall high up, one is mounted on the desk, and I can adjust those. And I actually have them plugged into HomeKit smart plugs. So when I say, let's make a video, those actually just turn on automatically. I don't have to mess with the Elgato app or even the Aperture app. Everything just turns on with smart plugs. I also have that Amran 200X plugged into a HomeKit smart plug. Now there's a lot going on with the desk setup. This is a very utilitarian desk. I really wanted everything to just be ready to record either a podcast or video. So it's not the most aesthetically pleasing desk, although I tried to make it as much as possible, but again, very functional for making videos and podcasts. First of all, I have my Rode PSA-1 mic arm with the Earthworks Ethos microphone. This is what I use to record podcasts. I'll go through everything on top of the desk and then I'll go underneath the desk to kind of show you that world. I also have these arms clamped to the desk. On one arm is one of the Elgato Key Light Airs for my fill light. And then I also have my shotgun microphone for videos. This is the Sennheiser MKH-416. And I got this idea from DSLR Video Shooter, but putting your shotgun microphone on a mic arm that you would normally use for like a podcast microphone, but this way I can position it wherever I need to so it's right out of frame and it'll stay right there and I don't have to worry about adjusting like little microphone arms and all that kind of stuff. I can just move it where I want to and then it goes out of the way when I don't need it anymore, which is pretty cool. I do have my iPad Pro here on the Magflot stand, really like this. I edit all my podcasts on the iPad. And then behind that, I do have a large HomePod. I really wish that Apple would make another large HomePod and I'd love to get a big stereo pair of that for this office, but I have that. I have an Apple TV there connected to my video switcher, just in case I ever wanna do anything on the second monitor. I have a Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro video switcher where I have my Sony a7 IV in there and also a Sony A6400 for my top-down shot. Doing YouTube and tutorial style videos, I really wanted to have just a top-down shot that was always ready to record, whether it's a device or my iPad, iPhone. And this way, with this top-down shot, I can just put my devices here. It kind of has a nice wood background. This desk is actually from Home Depot. It's a Husky desk, it was only about $250. I can do my top-down product shots right here with the Sony a6400. I have a Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter lens on it, which again, great for these top-downs. And that's also connected on an arm clamped to the desk. The Sony a6400 has a constant power battery plugged into the power strip underneath the desk. Again, I'll show you that in a second. And then my Sony a7 IV, I'm using it to record right now, but it typically sits on the desk right next to this monitor. There is an angled shot here in the office. I was hoping to get a straight on shot with the back wall flat and maybe even get the desk in the shot, but the office just was not big enough to do that. I tried moving the desk away from the wall, camera behind the desk. It just wasn't working. I needed to go too far into the office and I lost too much space. So I keep the Sony a7 IV here on the desk on a desk tripod. And then that also has a USB-C cable to a power plug, but that's also on a HomeKit smart switch. And so when I say, let's make a video to the home assistant, then the a7 IV gets power immediately and the battery's charging. So I never have to worry about power for the Sony a7 IV or the a6400 on the top-down shots. Still using an LG Ultrafine 4K monitor. I have a studio display coming, but you know, it's months out. So it's a visa mount that's also on an articulating arm. I have an Opal C1 webcam that, again, with a studio display, you know, that webcam is a little iffy. So I'll keep using the Opal studio camera. Underneath the monitor, of course, the brains of the operation is the Mac Studio, just the M1 Max version. For the videos that I do, the M1 Max is plenty. I did get a two terabyte SSD and 64 gigs of unified memory. So this should last me quite a while. Having that SD card slot right on the front, gold. I also have a Stream Deck under there where I can run some shortcuts, especially for recording. I have an OWC Envoy Pro external SSD, which I do kind of like my scratch editing on there. And then I also have a Synology, which I could do another video on that. If you want to see it, let me know. But I have a Synology I just got set up over the network in my network closet. And so that's where I store most of my footage. And again, this Mac Studio is connected directly via Ethernet, as is the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. So if I ever want to live stream, I know that the Blackmagic is connected by Ethernet as well. Ran all those Ethernet cables as we were building the house and they all tested, everything worked. A couple more things on top of the desk. I have an Anchor MagSafe charger here. It can charge the iPhone. I can just magnetically attach it there. But it also has USB-C ports and just regular plugs on the back, which is really helpful if I need to connect a headphone amp or some other peripheral and it needs power. I don't have to reach to the power strip under the desk. I can just use this right here. I also have a Blu-ray disc, external Blu-ray disc reader right here because sometimes you need to rip a disc. And so this is connected 
to a CalDigit Element Dock Thunderbolt 4. Again, I'll show you that under the desk in a moment. And of course, AirPods Max on that stand there. I'll put the link to all of that in the video description. And the messiest part of the office, I haven't figured out my equipment storage just yet. Again, like I said, this is a small office, so there's a lot of stuff down there I gotta take care of. I also did get a keyboard tray that clamped to the desk so I didn't have to drill anything in. And that's been working pretty good. It's a Tetchy desk mat right there. I did get a filing cabinet where I've stored some things, but not enough room for all of the equipment. There's no closet in here or anything, so again, have to figure that out. Now under the desk, it starts getting a little messy. I tried to do cable management, but after a while there was just too much going on, and so don't have great cable management. But I do have here mounted under the desk, I screwed in some metal brackets. These are actually used to mount a laptop under a desk, but I'm using it to hold my Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. I originally had this with command strips, but I didn't trust it. So I screwed these into the wooden desk. That was pretty easy to do. And so this is holding it. I can still slide it out if I wanna access the Mix Pre 3 and take it out of here. Got a cheap kind of just headphone clamp here. So I have my, my Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros right here on the desk. So I take them off when I'm podcasting. And again, microphone stand is the Rode PSA1 clamped right here to the desk. Now, like I said, under the desk, we do have some spaghetti here. I've actually screwed a power strip underneath the desk where I have most things plugging into that power strip. Then we realized the house kind of has some brownouts, especially when there's a storm, the power blips a lot. Did not want my Mac Studio and other important equipment suffering from all those little brownouts. So I actually have an APC battery backup here where I have my Mac Studio, my Blackmagic 810 Mini Pro, and then I have another one where my Synology and network equipment lives in the closet. And so important equipment is on the APC. Now, like I said, I have smart plugs for the different lights. So my camera charger, my lights, all of those are connected to HomeKit smart plugs that I have connected to scenes and automations. Then I also have that CalDigit Element Hub where I have some other Thunderbolt accessories plugged into the Mac Studio, which has great amount of ports, but just not enough. Needed some more USB A's and USB C ports. So that's living under there as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief studio tour. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Yes, I'm wearing a different shirt. I forgot to record an outro, so it's a different day. Anyway, drop a comment below. Let me know your questions and what else you'd like to see on the Bearded Teacher channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell. You know what to do. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.